Amen. Well, we're going to continue in our series on the book of James. And let's remember, James is a practical book of instruction for the early church. Amen. It was a practical letter to the people of God who were scattered around because of persecution. And James was just simply telling them how they should live for Christ. How many know we want to live for Christ? Can I hear you say amen? So we've looked at several different uh, um, subjects, and today we're going to be picking up in James chapter 2, verse 14, and we're going to talk about faith. Everybody say faith. And look at what it says in verse, verse 14. It says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? He asks them a question. Can, can the type of faith that just says they have it, but never has no action behind it, can that kind of faith save? That's a heavy question, right? If you want to put a title on today's message, you can entitle it, Real Faith Produces Action. Real Faith Produces Action. Amen. So James is simply telling us that a, a person with genuine faith always acts upon their beliefs. This morning, if we say we're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's got to be more than just words, right? Remember that saying a long time ago, there was a saying, action speaks louder than words. How many of you remember that saying, right? Right? Well, where do you think that saying originated at? It originated in the word of God. Because James is telling us this morning that real faith produces action. Now watch this. It's, it's so simple to really understand. How many know we're saved by grace through faith? Isn't that what Paul told the Ephesians church? You're saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. It takes faith to be saved. Say amen. If you're, if you're born again this morning, you expressed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's how you got saved, right? The Bible also says that we're to learn how to walk by faith even when we don't see it, right? Walk by faith and not by sight. We don't go by what we see. We go by what we know. We go by what we believe. We walk by faith even when you don't see it. I don't see the healing, Pastor. I don't see the, the, the blessing coming, Pastor. I don't see the change in my spouse, Pastor. It's okay. You walk by faith even when you don't see it. Right? Even in our time of giving, we give, we give generously by faith. Right? When, I, when I'm putting my finances into the kingdom of God, when I'm, when I'm giving my tithes and I'm giving my offerings, I'm doing it by faith. Right? I'm not looking at what my bank account says. I'm not looking if I'm blessed or not blessed. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm taking a step of faith and I'm giving generously by faith. We do it by faith. Everything we do, it's done by faith. We worship God. We were just singing a song, right? And we lift up our hands and we worship and we close our eyes and we do it by faith, right? We're not just singing. We're, we're singing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's what I believe when I lift up my hands and when I'm singing, I'm, I'm singing to God. I'm, I'm making a merry melody in my heart unto the Lord. When I pray, this morning when we got up and we prayed, me and my wife pray together. We get up and we pray. And when we start talking to God, I'm talking to God by faith. I'm asking God to do things that aren't done yet. I'm asking God to move in areas that seem difficult, that seem hard to move. But I'm trusting and I'm believing that God does it by, by faith, right? Even in the area of service, we serve other people by faith. Not because we like them and not because we dislike them. We do it because of faith. Everything we do, we do it by faith. Tell your neighbor next to you, by faith. See, all the things in life that we find hard to do, 
All the difficulties in life that we say, man, I'm never, I don't know how I'm going to get to this world. All the things that you find hard to do, we should do them by faith. Right? If we just learn that, if we learn, that's what James is trying to tell us. Everything we do, we do it by faith. It has to be done that way. The only way, the writer of Hebrews says, the only way to really please God is by what? By faith. That's the way you please God. You please him by faith. So if we don't have faith in those areas of our life, if if we don't express faith or walk by faith or have faith when we come across difficult areas, watch this, that thing that you're facing today, that struggle that you're facing today, that problem that you're facing today, that mistake that you're facing today, if you don't have faith in those areas, you can become discouraged, you can become upset, you can get your feelings hurt, you can start complaining about it, instead of just trusting God for it by faith. Faith makes life much more easy, right? But it's not just saying, I believe, right? See, real faith produces action. There has to be some substance behind our belief. Can I hear you say amen? I was reading about one of the early uh, pioneers of the faith, you could call it, in the 1800s, a gentleman named George Mueller. Anybody ever heard of George Mueller? He, he, He ran orphanages and He was a great evangelist also during the 1800s. And one of his biographers, he said this about George Mueller. He said he had an enviable communion with Christ and had repeatedly demonstrated the power of prayer with his faith. They said that George Mueller had a notebook where he wrote down more than 50,000 prayers 50,000, not 50, not 500, not 5,000, 50,000 prayers he had wrote down in his notebook that were already answered by God. Wow, that's heavy. Can you imagine? I would love for God just to answer five of my prayers. How about you? He had 50,000 answered prayers recorded. And the biographer said this, that you can learn from his life that when you live dependent on God, God will create favorable circumstances for you. How many of you need some favorable circumstances to come your way? Well, all you got to do is just trust in God, depend on God, put your faith in God. Faith always produces action. So we're going to go through this passage There's several scriptures we're going to go through. And the first one is in James chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Look at what it says. It says, suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing. Now this is, remember this, James is writing to the church, the early church. And he tells them, suppose you see not just a homeless person, not just a needy person, but someone in your circle. A brother or a sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye, have a good day, right? Stay warm and eat well. But you don't give that person any good, any food or clothing. What good does that do? He asks another question. What, what good does it do? Like sometimes, I don't know if you're guilty of this. I try not to be guilty of it. Right away when someone asks for prayer, I try to pray for them. Even when there's a text, I said, you know what, I'm just going to write my prayer out for them. I try to do it. But have you ever said this to someone that was in need of prayer? I'll be praying for you. Just to say, like, hello, how you doing? God bless you. I'll be praying. It can become a cliche. I'm not saying you do it, but it, it, it can happen, right? Where we just say things because it's the right thing to say, right? It's the right thing to say, but there's really no substance, no passion, there's no action behind those words. And that's what James is saying. He, he's saying, if you see someone that's in need, and you just say, hey, have a good day. I hope you stay warm, right? I hope you eat well. But you don't do anything about it. You don't put something behind 
those words. They're just empty words. And that could mean your faith is empty too. When you just say things because it's the right things to say. And James even asked, what good does that do? What good is it? Now, think about this. I know today that there's nothing I could do to earn salvation. How many believe that? Good works cannot earn salvation, right? We're saved by grace through faith, right? Grace through faith. Nothing I could do. I was a sinner. I was lost. I was going to hell, right? You were a sinner. You were lost. You were going to hell. There was nothing you could do. But somebody told us about Jesus. Somebody told us about Jesus, and we said, yes, I'd like to be saved. I'd like to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And at that moment, when you express faith in God, you were born again. How many of you have been born again? Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you've been born again. The moment you said yes to you, or maybe even today, maybe today, you're here today, and you, you need Jesus. All you have to do is say yes to the Lord, and that moment... Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You don't have to do anything. You know how I know that? When Jesus died on the cross, there were two other guys hanging on the cross with them. Two other guys had never been to church, never got baptized, never gave no tithes, never raised money for United We Can, never even attended a worship service. But one of them went to heaven because he put his faith in Jesus. Right? And that's what it takes. It takes our faith in Jesus. But what James is telling us when you express faith in the Lord, when you, when, you, when you express faith in God, there's something that happens when you do that. You change, right? How many of you have been changed? Right? You've been changed. I, I'm changed. I'm different. Even though I might look the same, right? I might walk the same. My voice might sound the same. But on the inside, I'm thinking different. I'm feeling different, and I'm living different. How about you? So we know that when you get saved, something happens. James is not saying that works save us. He's saying that faith saves us, but there's something that happens when you put your faith in Jesus. There's something that happens that begins to produce good works inside of you. You start doing things that you never did before. You start, you start wanting to read the Bible. You start wanting to go to church. You start wanting to tell people about Jesus. You, you want to be a cheerful giver. You want to be a servant because that faith inside of you produces action. Tell your neighbor, there's got to be some action. See, what, what James is talking about here. He's talking about an empty faith that's just words alone. It's just words with no evidence or fruit of salvation. And you know, remember, I keep mentioning this. James listened a lot to his brother Jesus, right? And he was around during the time his cousin, right? Jesus' cousin was John the Baptist. So James' cousin was John the Baptist also, because Jesus and James were brothers. So I imagine James heard John say things like, by the way you live, you'll, you'll prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God, by the way you live. See? It's not just what I say, it's how I live that proves I've turned my life over to God. Faith is not proven by what we say. Faith is proven by what you do. In Matthew chapter 3, 9, it says, don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. It doesn't matter how well we can articulate our belief. It doesn't matter how many scriptures we could quote. It doesn't matter how much I could tell you about Jesus. If I'm not living it, if it's not active inside of me, it's empty. Somebody say empty. What matters is if you're able to do what you say you believe. I believe. Do you believe? Then there should be some evidence in our lives. There should be some, some fruit in our lives that proves, that proves I'm born again. And that's what James is hitting on right here. 
He's talking about don't, be, don't let it just be words. Let it be words with action. I like the way Jesus uh, um, saw it in Scripture where he talked about a group of guys. Let me read this story to you. In Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, it says, When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus, seeing their faith. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. You know what's heavy about this story? Is the paralyzed man, when Jesus said to him, my, my child, your sins are forgiven, Jesus wasn't going based on what the paralyzed man did. He was going based on what his friends did, right? Because his friends had to pick him up and carry him to the house. When his friends got to the house and they saw the crowd, they couldn't get in. You know, these guys were victory outreach guys. They said, I'm going to figure out a way to get into this place, right? I'm going to sneak in, right? How many of you ever snuck into a movie theater, right? You figure out ways to get into places, right? These guys figured out a way. Well, let's go up on the roof. We'll carry him up on the roof. We'll dig a hole in the roof, and we'll lower him down. How I many know that's, that's action right there, right? That's action. And that's what James is talking about here. Look at verse 17 and 18. He says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. These guys produce good deeds. He says, it is dead and useless. Can you imagine that? If I just keep saying I got faith and I never do anything, I never have no action behind it, James says it's dead and useless. Now, someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. We don't want to have unseen faith. You know, we don't want to have faith that nobody could see. The word good deeds, when you look it up in the original Greek language, it means to bear fruit, right? To bear fruit. Our good deeds should bear fruit. It means to labor faithfully. We should labor faithfully for the Lord. It means to keep your testimony. How many know just keeping your testimony is, is proof that you're saved? Come on, somebody. It means to benefit other people. When this paralyzed man was healed, he was healed because Jesus saw the faith of his four friends. Do you realize the power of demonstrated faith today? Do you, do you realize that your faith in action has the power to lead someone to the Lord? Your faith in action where you take a step of faith and you just step out and attempt something for God, it has the power to heal somebody who's sick in Bible. The Bible says very clearly, Jesus seeing their faith. What got Jesus' attention was not the man, the paralyzed man on the mat. It was the faith of his friends who went through all of that trouble to get him into a place where he could receive his miracle. Sometimes it takes a little bit of effort on our part to see the miraculous take place. Sometimes it's going to take you giving, extending an invitation. Sometimes it's going to take you driving over to another part of town and picking somebody up. Sometimes it's going to take some effort on your part to see souls saved. Somebody say amen. It wasn't the paralyzed man's faith that did it. It was the faith of his friends. You never know. I never know what my demonstrate. You never know what, what, what happens when you're in church and you're worshiping and other people are looking at you. 
I learn a lot through observation. I would rather watch something, right? I like, I like, I like learning by watching videos, watching other people when they minister, right? I learn a lot by observation, right? Some people learn by hearing. For me, I learn better by watching. Watching, listening, paying attention, right? You just never know when you demonstrate your faith whose life is going to be touched. You just never know today. You were worshiping the Lord earlier during the worship part of the service. You were singing a song and you were singing it with so much passion that the person next to you got touched by your passion. You never know what your works, your good works are going to do in the life of somebody else. Your demonstration of faith will produce fruit for you and for others. That's why, church, we can't hold back. Don't hold back. Be passionate. Be passionate about your walk with God. Step out and attempt things for God. On the way home today, step out. Witness to someone who's lost. Witness to a sinner. Witness to someone that needs Jesus. Step out. Pray for someone who needs prayer. Take time out of the day. Say, I'm going to pray for you, but I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to pray for your healing right now. I'm going to pray for your... You never know that demonstration of faith at that moment and at that time might change their life. Step out and sow a seed of faith when, they're, when, when, when everything tells you not to. But you know what? I'm going to demonstrate my faith through my generosity. See, Jesus sees our faith when we step out. How do I know that? Well, there's a story in Luke chapter 21. I'm not going to have us turn there. You can look it up later. But in Luke chapter 21, the first four verses, it talks about the widow woman and her two small copper coins. How many of you ever read that story? Right? Let me, let me give you a picture of what was happen, happening. It was offering time. And everybody was bringing their offerings. And the Pharisees, they, they love to, you know, let everybody see what they're doing. Oh, look at me, right? They say the Pharisees used to walk around with, with little boxes on their head and on their wrist that they would put the scriptures in. They're called phylacteries. And their boxes would get bigger and bigger and bigger because their head was getting bigger and bigger because they were so full of themselves, right? But the Pharisees love to be noticed, right? They love to come and, and, and talk about how much they're doing and how well they were doing. But the Bible says there was a little widow, and all she had was two small copper coins. And the Bible describes those two small copper coins as all she had to live on. She was down to her last. But when the offering time came, all the Pharisees were coming and they were putting their, their money into the offering. And the Bible says Jesus was sitting off to the side. And the Pharisees were coming and it didn't move Jesus. It didn't move Jesus. They were just coming and making sure what people would see the amount. You know how they hold their envelope up so the people in the back of them could see their amount. Come on, somebody. Jesus didn't even look. The Bible says when that little widow woman came and she put her two small copper coins in, the Bible says, and Jesus looked up. See, Jesus sees your faith. He sees our faith. When we demonstrate our faith, he sees it. When we give by faith, he sees it. When we walk by faith, he sees it. When we trust by faith, he sees it. This widow woman was believing that God was going to meet her needs, so she gave her last. She demonstrated her faith. Another part of James chapter 2 verse 19 to 20 look at what he says this is very this is pretty heavy right here he says you say you have faith how many say they have faith come on wave your hand if you say you have faith right we all say that right you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God how many believe there's one God right there's one God true Jehovah God he's one right the Lord our God he's one right you say you have faith for you believe that there's one God good for you the Bible says even demons believe this. Do you know the devil believes in God? Did you know that, that the devil believes in God? Even demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? 
It's useless. It's nothing. James is saying that just because we believe the right things, it doesn't mean that our faith will be productive. Just because we believe the right things. He says the devil even believes. His demons even believe. Now, that was surprising for a lot of people. You mean the devil has faith in God? Yeah, they, they're not atheists. You know that? The devil's not an atheist. He knows who God is. <clears throat> he was one of his angels. He saw God in his glory and got jealous of him. That's why he got kicked out of heaven, because he wanted to be like God. He wanted to exalt himself above God. He wanted everyone to worship him like he was God. And he forfeited his place in heaven. But he knows who God is. And the Bible says he took a third of the angels with him. Those fallen angels, demons, fallen angels, spirits, they know who God is. They know he's real. They know who he is. It's not surprising that the devil and his demons aren't atheists. They believe in the existence of God. They believe even in the deity of Jesus Christ. They know who Jesus is. They know he's the son of God. That's why they try everything to stop you from serving him. They believe the Bible is God's word. Did you know that? That the devil knows this is the word of God. That's why he distracts you so much from reading the Bible. That's why when you're in church, he doesn't want you to hear the message. He doesn't want you to follow along. He doesn't want you to take notes. He doesn't want you to receive. Bible talks about how the enemy comes and he snatches away the seed that was sown. They even believe Jesus is coming back again. The devil ain't no atheist. But I want to let you know the devil ain't going to heaven. The devil is not going to get saved. Right? Just because he believes doesn't mean anything. You have to have action behind your belief. You have to have, your faith must produce good works. That's how, that's how you'll know. It's kind of like your DNA, right? Your DNA proves who you are, right? Your fingerprint proves who you are. Your dental records will prove who you are. Your faith in action will prove that you're a child of God. We're children of the Most High God. And because of that, we should always, always have some action behind our belief. There should be, we should always be doing something for God. Somebody say amen. Always be doing something, God. We should be trusting that, that God, what, what makes us believe about God and makes our faith real is our faith in action. Believing, just believing is not what makes your faith real, but it's the action behind your belief that makes your faith, faith real. It brings it to life. It brings it to life. It demonstrates it to other people. So James uses another example in, in James chapter 221. And this is the kind of faith we want to have. We don't want to have empty faith. We don't have unseen faith. We don't want to have dead faith. Or we don't want to have demonic faith. We want to have productive faith. Or active faith. James 2, 21 through 24, it says, Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions? Notice that. See what it says? That Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions. When he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions, watch this, his actions made his faith complete. And so, and it, so it happened just as the scriptures say, watch this, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called a friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. How do I show I'm right with God? By the way I live. How do you show you're right with God? By the way you live, by what you do. There has to be some type of physical expression going on in your life 
as to what inwardly took place. It's like with water baptism. We say water baptism is an outward expression of what inwardly took place in our life. When we got saved, we accepted Jesus. So when we come and get baptized, we get baptized, we go under the water, and we come up, right? The old man goes under, and the new creation comes up. If you're a believer here today, there is such a thing as good works. That's what James is talking about. Good works let lets people know, lets the world know that I'm a Christian, that you're a Christian, that you're a believer. It's not by what we say, it's by what we do. By what we do. And we get a lot of opportunities to do good things, right? Bible says this, Paul the Apostle says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You're to work it out. You're to work at it. You're to live it out daily. Just like Abraham, when God called him, watch this. When God called Abraham, he called him from the Ur of Chaldea. Abraham, when God called him, Abraham was a worship heathen gods. He worshiped the moon and the stars. His God, the God that Abraham worshiped before God called him out, they used to offer up their children as sacrifices, Right? They used to offer their children as sacrifice. So when God, when God called Abraham and God had Abraham and told Abraham to take his son, his only son, to the mountain and offer him up as a sacrifice, it wasn't nothing new to Abraham because that's the kind of life that he came out of. But what God was telling him to do, if you could do it for the devil, you could do it for me. Some of us, we lived hard for the devil. We lived so hard for the devil, we lost our freedom. We lived so hard for the devil, we lost our dignity. We lived so hard for the devil, we gave up our, our jobs and everything. We did so much wrong for the enemy. How much more can we live for God today? How much more can you and I commit our lives to Jesus today? I don't know how much money I spent on heroin. There was a lot, right? I spent a lot of money on heroin before I got saved. I used to smoke too. Before I got saved, I used to smoke camels, the non-filtered camels. Imagine that. Nasty. I can't even stand the smell of cigarette smoke now. I used to smoke like two packs a day. I used to spend all my money, every dollar I'd get my hand on. Didn't matter if the babies needed milk or if Sister Meyer needed money for bills. Every dollar I got my hand on, I would give it to the connection. Anybody, come on, anybody here say they used to do that? How many used to give your money? How many used to give your money to the connection? Right? I would spend all day long figuring out ways to hustle money so I could just give it to some guy who didn't treat me bad, right? Didn't have no respect. You know how it is. Once you get, once you get to a certain place, the, even the connection don't respect you no more. How much more? Look, if we had actions in the world, we did things that sent us to prison. Growing up, it used to be a badge of honor to go to prison. I'm serious. That's how they would talk in the neighborhood as we were young boys. Growing up, we'd hear the older homies talk about the joint and being in jail, and we would aspire to get locked. How foolish were we? We would aspire to become a, a, you know, a convict, a pinto viejo. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? A prisoner. That was something. We, that was like our college. How much more... How much more can we do for God over what we did for the enemy? We did a lot for the devil. We, we put in time for the devil. Come on, somebody. Some of you, you put in time. You put in years. You put in years, and you weren't impatient with the enemy. You didn't get mad at him if he didn't come through. Right? You didn't give up. Oh, that's it. I'm not using drugs no more. Walk away. 
how much more should you and I have faith with action for God? Abraham was an example of real faith in action. He came from a, a family of, of, of people that were a little successful. They owned a lot of uh, property. But one day God called him out of that. God came to him and he said, I'm going to make you a great nation. And he called him out of the Ur of Chaldea. And he told him to go to a place. Watch this. Here's the part. He told Abraham to go to a place that when he gets there, I'll tell you. Some of you want to know how it's going to work out. Some of us, well, we want to know God's plan, how it's all going to unfold. How is this all going to unfold? How, how is my life going to unfold? How is the restoration of my family going to unfold? How, how is my financial prosperity going to unfold? I can only tell you what God told Abraham. I'll let you know when you get there. It's a, it's a walk of faith. But Abraham had to be willing to put some action behind his belief. He had to be willing to take that first step. He had to be willing to keep going, even though it took years for him to see the fulfillment of God's promise. It took time, but he had to be willing to live by faith. Not just say he had faith. He had to be willing to go through the trials. He had to be willing to go through the mistakes that he made. He had to be patient and waiting for the promise to come to, to pass. It, it's just the way it is. God took Abraham from what was a comfortable life and made him into a, a man of faith. He had a, he had a whole nation of people come out of his seed. You just don't know what your demonstration of faith will produce. Abraham's demonstration of faith produced the nation of Israel. It produced the people that were more than the stars of the sky. It produced us because we're heirs by faith of Abraham's promise. If it wasn't for Abraham, listen, if it was for Abraham stepping out by faith, you and I wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be children of the Most High God. He had to have some action. You and I, we have to have some action. We need, we need some active faith. We don't need that word faith no more. You know, nowadays, if you just believe it, you receive it. No, my friend, yes, you got to believe it, but you got to work for it. You got to live for it. You got you to gotta, you gotta stand your ground for it. You got to fight the enemy for it. See, faith without action produces nothing. That's why I love our ministry, because we're active. We always got something going on. Right? We always got something going on. We're always, there always some, there's always something going on. And watch this. Everything we do, we do it to win souls. Everything we do, we do it to reach people. Trunk or treat. You know, yeah, we want to have a safe environment for the kids, right? Don't we? But really, we want people to get saved that night. We want families that come, when they come with their children... We want to be witnessing to them. We want them to be looking at us how we are and to see our, our lifestyle and, and as we're praying for them, right? Getting their names and numbers so we can follow up on them. See, it's faith with action. We, we do those things because we want to reach souls. We want to see people get saved. We want to see lives changed. And that's what James is talking about. Everything we do, we got to remember why. Just remember your why and the how will be easy. Remember your why and the how will be easy. Abraham and Sarah, he left, he left home and they started their journey. And God gave them a promise, right, that they were going to have an heir. And he prayed and he prayed and he believed and he trusted. And eventually the miracle came to pass. Thank God for miracles. Thank God for your miracle. Thank God for your blessing. Thank God that your marriage has got put back together. Thank God your children are going the right direction. Thank God you got healed. God gave them their miracle. And then God comes to them one day after he gave them his miracle. God comes to Abraham like he does to us all the time. Just when we think we're out of the, out of the struggle. Come on, somebody, the struggle's over. 
I've arrived. I'm blessed. God will come and he'll challenge you. He'll come and he take, like he did to Abraham. He'll tell him, Abraham, you know your son? You know the one you really love? You know the promised one? You know your miracle? I want you to take your son. And I want you to offer him up to me as a sacrifice. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine somebody telling you to kill your baby? But remember, Abraham used to, that's how they used to worship. That's the things he used to, he used to be involved in that before he became a friend of God, before God called him out of it. So God wasn't being mean to him, asking him to commit that part of his life to him. God wasn't being too hard or difficult on Abraham. God was testing him. Just like God tests us. You know, God tests us, right? He tests our faith. And that was just a test for Abraham. If you get your son, the son you love, you know, the one I gave you, the promise, take your son, and I want you to take him up to the mountain. You know what the Bible says Abraham did? The Bible says Abraham woke up the next day, right? He got his son. He chopped some wood, right? And he was heading toward the mountain. And he got to the bottom of the mountain and he told his servants, wait here. And look at what he says. This is what always gives me. He says, wait here. I and the lad are going to go and worship the Lord. That's what God wanted to hear. I think right then, I think right at that moment when he said, I and the lad are going to go worship, God knew he wouldn't put anything above his relationship with God. No person, no place, no thing, no job, nothing would be more important to Abraham than his worship of God. And I believe that's, I believe that's what God is doing for us. God wants to bring us all to a place where he's number one in our lives. Not just by what we say, right? Jesus is Lord. I could say that all day long. But until I get that mountaintop call to give up something I really love, until I get to that place where God deals with me over a certain area of my life and wants me to bow down and worship him, until I get to that place, I can't really say Jesus is Lord until I've made him that. When I've demonstrated that to him, when I willingly gave up something for the kingdom of God. Demonstrated faith. That's what James is talking about. An active faith is the only type of faith that produces results. I can tell you I'm saved all day long. I've known people, I've met people that can quote scripture. I got jealous of them. There's one guy, he could quote every every scripture you can imagine the only problem was he couldn't live it he couldn't live it he couldn't live it and I've come to realize it's not so much what I know it's who I know it's who I know and I know Jesus and I know his voice he says my sheep they know my voice and when Jesus speaks to you, just like God spoke to Abraham, Jesus is going to speak to us. Just like you've known there's been times in your life when Jesus is speaking to you, when you open up your word and you read it, and it's right there and it jumps out on you and it hits you. And you know God is talking to you. He's speaking to you. Just do what he says. Just do what God says. Don't just listen. Don't just quote it. Don't just say it, but demonstrate it in your life. Say amen this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. One last thing. In, in James chapter 2, 25 and 26, look at what he says. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. 
he uses the example of Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. She ran a brothel. Do you know she's listed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ? Can you imagine that? Her, her faith was demonstrated when she hid those men and got them on their way. Safe. She put, put it simply, she risked her life. She risked her well-being for other people. That's, what, that's the kind of church I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of a church that puts it on the line for the lost. That's what Victory Outreach has been since 1967. We've been a ministry of sacrifice. We've been a ministry of compassion. We've been a ministry that reaches out to the hurting people of this world with the plan of Jesus Christ. We put it on the line. We don't have it all. We don't, we don't, we, we don't have no millionaires here, right? I don't, I don't even know we have any millionaires in all of Victory Outreach. But we've been able to do what God has called us to do for the last 50 some odd years because there's a people who walk by faith. They demonstrate, they demonstrate their commitment. They demonstrate their generosity. They demonstrate their loyalty with their lives. That's who we are. And let, Lord, let that never change. Let us never become a people who talk, who say we're going to do things, who have all the right answers, but we never have no backup with our lifestyle. God forbid that we ever become that type of church. Let us continue to be a church full of men and women that are unique in their own way, but we trust God for everything. And when God speaks, we obey. Can I hear you say amen? That's the type of faith God wants us to have. Every head bowed and every eye closed.